What's up, YouTube? So uh, today, guys, I uh, I got this from uh, one of the guys I follow on Instagram in a trade. This is the uh, fly replica of the Cry Precision cage armor chassis. Um, the Cry version is like a sixteen hundred dollar play carrier. The thing's crazy nice. I've gotten to play with one uh, in real life. One of the guys I play airsoft with down in Detroit every once in a while. He own he owns one, and uh, the thing is like it's like running pillows with plates in it. It's crazy comfortable. It, it is worth every penny of that sixteen hundred dollars. Believe me. So, uh, anyways, there's that one famous picture floating around of uh, of a Delta guy wearing an AOR one uh, cage plate carrier, and uh, so I've been wanting one for a little while. Just kind of I've always been eyeballing them, and uh, finally that guy uh, <clears throat> the guy I follow on Instagram. Um, that AOR1 guy, just to be sure, I'll give you a shout out there, buddy. Um, he uh, he had one, and then he was getting rid of it. So I, you know, we made a trade. Good trade. Thanks again for that trade. Um, so anyway, while I was waiting for it to get to delivered to my house, I was trying to find any review I could on YouTube, and there's literally nothing on this. All I could find was a handful of ones on Cry, and a million of the CPC and uh, NCPC replicas, but nothing of the uh, cage armor chassis replica so and there's really only a handful of companies that make them out there I apologize for the noise guys I'm not too far from the road right now so you're probably hearing cars go by in the background um, so like I was saying there's only a handful of companies that actually make a replica of these guys um, fly is probably the best company that makes a replica of it um, there was like a dragon red version a few years back I think that was who made it um, and then like an EB Airsoft version that floated around for a while. In both of those, I've, I had the Dragon Red version um, when it came out maybe six years ago and the thing was garbage. Stitching was awful. Um, the only thing that was good about it was the internal pads on it and that was, that was it. Everything else was wrong about it and it was like a Gen 2 version of it. This is more, I think it's Gen 3 is the style of the armor chassis. So uh, anyway, let's get to the review. Um, <clears throat> to start, obviously it's Fly's AOR1. Um, it's not true AOR1. It's 500D. Yeah, if I'd say probably 500D Cordura. Um, Fly's AOR1 webbing. So the coloring's a little mismatched, but that doesn't bother me. I honestly, I honestly really like the uh, the contrast of it. Uh, it makes it stick out a little bit. Um, ignore the pouches on the front. These are just some Toy Soldier uh, SR25 pouches that I've had for years. Um, and my emitter pouch is a Mali Monkey Tactical in real AOR1, so you guys can actually see the comparison here. How close Fly is to real AOR1, it's not too bad. Um, so, on to the uh, back. This is one of my biggest questions, was would it accept Cry Precision Back Panels? As you can see, it does. Um, the zippers are not perfect. As you can, there's a little bit of, a little bit of difference there. Um, they're not exact. You have to kind of line them up perfectly to get them to zip, and it's it, you have to wrestle with them to do it. Like, but they're there. So the reason I couldn't ever see it in pictures either was they're actually sewn in on the inside of that seam. So when you've got nothing on there, it hides that zipper. You've got to actually turn it out to find it. So take this back panel off real quick so we can look at the rear plate bag. So what they did do correctly is they also did the uh, every other you know in between the rows of Molly you've got the velcro which the real cry is like that. The one thing they're missing which is on the drag handle is on the cry there's like almost a um, hard foam rubber black handle right here so it's not just Cordura. Um, other than that it's got zippers like I said. The uh, It does have its it comes with a stiffener inside the plate bag so if you're not if you don't have plates in it it still kind of holds its shape. Um, one of the in inaccuracies that I've seen compared to the one picture of you know the real thing that exists is the webbing they use they use coyote webbing instead of AOR1 webbing which on the real Delta version um, that the Delta guys are wearing it's got AOR1 webbing as well. So you've got both of the, uh, the um, quick doff feature so you can 
grab these two wires and pull them and it'll come apart just like the CPC, the flag, the bat, the rear plate bag will drop off and then you just remove the whole plate carrier from the front. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that for you guys. It's a pain in the ass to put these things back together when you do that. I've done it one or two times and I hate, I hate putting them back together. So to actually put this plate carrier on, it's basically, it, it's very similar to the CPC where with the CPC though, you can lift up the cummerbund from it, remove the cummerbund, and then the whole side will fold, which this one obviously doesn't because they've got this part of the cummerbund actually comes up behind the plate bag. So you do need to remove the buckle to uh, take on and off this plate carrier. Um, let's go to the cummerbund itself. So my one gripe about this thing is that uh, for the stiffener in here, like on, cry, on the cry version and like on a CPC, it has uh, like it's, it's a flexible plastic. It's a it's kind of like um, almost a Lexan material. It could be Lexan. For the fly version, all they did was put some uh, some L200 foam in here. So it's super flexible. There's no, I mean, it's stiffener. It holds its shape, but I, I would like it to be a little bit stiffer. Um, onto the pads, these internal pads are complete garbage. They are harder than the L200 that's underneath this. These things, I honestly take right out. Um, I may replace them with some real cry precision pads, but as for right now, this felt with L200 underneath, it's honestly extremely comfortable. It, it is 10 times more comfortable than with those shitty pads in there. Um, the rear of the plate bag is basically identical to uh, a CPC. This is why you see a lot of guys, there's kind of a trend for a while there with guys running with CPCs and they would buy chassis plate bags. I'm not really sure why, what, what the lure, allure of the chassis plate bag is, um, but they would run them on their CPCs for a while. So we'll talk about this front plate bag a little bit more here. So like I said, you can come on flap like every plate carrier on the market really. Um, the one thing it does not have is an internal magazine flap. It does have a little bit of a kangaroo pouch here. Ugh, if I can get a hold of it and open it for you guys. And that's about it right there. There's really, that's it. So you, you could fit maybe one mag in there. <laughs> you definitely could not get two. Uh, maybe. We'll see. No, I don't think you could get two in there. It's a little too snug, yeah. So you could get one SR25 mag in there, one M4 mag, maybe a handful of MP7 mags or MP5 mags. Um, I'm not really positive on the intent of this, maybe for a map or a navigation panel. That's the only thing I can think because it does have two little strips of, uh, of loop Velcro on the inside there that are facing each other. So I'm not really sure what the full intent of that pouch is. Um, there is no admin pouch like you have on the CPC up here. So you just have these two rows of Velcro and then a flap with that small little kind of admin kangaroo pouch right there. Nothing too special about it. Um, as for the shoulder pads, these things, these things are heaven. I wish that every plate carrier had shoulder pads like this. These things are like pillows. If they would have made the internal pads like this, this plate carrier would be amazing. Um, for the rear plate bag, really I think we covered pretty much everything on this guy. Um, like I said, it is what it is. It's not super expensive. I think you can find them now when I looked. I think you can find them on like Shooter CV gear for like 200 bucks. And usually they include the plate carrier and the uh, blast belt. This guy didn't have the blast belt at all with it um, when I got in the trade, which I'm not complaining, you know, it's a, it's a good vest. Um, if I had to rate it one out of uh, one out of ten stars, I'd probably give it about a seven or eight. It's pretty good. It's compared to my Samapo gear and CPC, I it's pretty close. It's it's not far behind it. Um, so like I said, guys, there was no video on YouTube of this thing yet, so. If you guys like it, you want to see some more reviews, just uh, give me a like, comment, you know, tell me what you guys want to review. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what I have. Uh, all right, we'll see you guys later.